Recent Carnegie postdoctoral researcher Seth Newsom is lead author of an unprecedented study of the diet of bald eagles from prehistoric times to the present. The study is part of an effort to reintroduce the eagles to the Channel Islands off California. Researchers compared the ratios of stable atomic isotopes to determine the diets of eagles up to 20,000 years ago. Scientists gathered bone and feather remains from a historical nesting site and also from paleontological sites on San Miguel Island and the California mainland. The Channel Islands are a pretty interesting scenario in which they were developed for their ranching and they were developed a bit for farming. But for the most part, um, they're a fairly intact piece of Southern California real estate. And um, they've had a pretty interesting sort of conservation story. Um, the islands are, are maintained and partially owned by the National Park Service, but also the Nature Conservancy owns a, owns a large chunk of Santa Cruz Islands and the Northern Channel Islands. And our study really focused on the Northern Channel Islands, the four islands in the north, San Miguel, Santa Rosa, Santa Cruz, and Anacapa Islands. Because prey animals contain different ratios of isotopic elements, depending on their habitat, the researchers were able to determine the diets of the eagles. So our study takes a more historical look and looks at what eagles did historically, what they forged on historically and prehistorically, that we go back about 20,000 years or so. What we found really was that prior to human arrival, eagles were very dependent on seabirds for their diet. And most of the ancient eagles that we analyzed uh, looked like they consumed quite a bit of, of seabirds, just relative to fish or other potential prey sources. And then that switched, obviously, during the historic period when um, introduced ungulates, the sheep and the cattle and some other things, uh, it appeared, at least from some of the chicks that we were able to analyze, that they, they, were, they represented a pretty large proportion of diet. Uh, four of the eight chicks that we analyzed looked like they were consuming mostly terrestrial prey sources during that historic period. These results may prove crucial to the National Park Service in its efforts to reintroduce the bald eagles to the Channel Islands. That sort of, that sort of perspective can, can provide some pretty unique um, and important information for the modern conservation efforts. Eagles are opportunistic feeders, changing prey as required. The Park Service needs to understand the diets of the birds to help with reintroduction. We're introducing them into a system that they really haven't seen before. And islands have seen quite a bit of, of ranching history where non-native ungulates, mostly in the form of sheep, but also cattle and horses and pigs, were introduced to those islands in the 1850s and really persisted on those islands all the way up to 2005. And the Park Service has they have a huge effort, essentially, to eradicate those animals from the islands. In the last, say, 50 to 100 years, there's been a lot of fishing in the islands, uh, fish that are probably pretty common prey for bald eagles. So in addition to the fish, the seabird populations on the islands have declined over the last 50 to 100 years as well. Researchers are concerned that a growing bald eagle population could exert pressure on the endangered island fox, as well as threaten seabird populations. Other potential prey are also problematic. They do switch their prey, and we don't know or we haven't observed them doing recently, which is carrion, for instance, of seals and sea lions. That could be it's a good source of prey in the Channel Islands. There's a lot of seals and sea lions out there. A lot of studies have shown that those sources of prey are also laden with a lot of contaminants. The eagles could be exposed to a, a pretty polluted uh, source of prey if they were to start feeding a lot on, on carrion from seals and sea lions. The scientists established the diets of the eagles by comparing the isotopic forms of elements found in their remains. Isotopes of elements vary depending on how many neutrons they have. Scientists can distinguish different isotopes by measuring their minute differences in mass. Because the iso values and the, the chemical signatures of the tissues that animals make those stick around and they preserve pretty well different types of tissues, you can go back in the time and look at museum collections a lot of museum collections have bone material or feather material in them, or you can look at archaeological and paleontological um, sites and collections, and those are mostly bone material. But you can look at the organic portion of that bone or that, uh, those feathers, and you can, you can analyze them for their isotopic signature. It tells you essentially you know, what the animals ate, and that's, it. that's what we were able to do in this study. Coastal marine ecosystems have higher amounts of carbon-13 and nitrogen-15. Marine ecosystems also have more steps in the food chain, resulting in higher amounts of nitrogen-15. 
the work done by Newsom and his colleagues represents an unusual approach. There's been a lot of work in the scientific literature, sort of, I would say sort of review papers where they've looked at a lot of different areas, but this is one of those studies that really zeroes in on one particular species in a given region. Now, working out exactly what those animals fed on or the sort of resources they, they used in the past in comparison to what they might have available to them today is something that's a little bit more rare in the, in the literature and something that you don't find very often. And that's kind of what we did with this study. Seth Newsom is currently at the University of Wyoming. The research was supported by the National Park Service, the National Science Foundation, the W.M. Keck Foundation, and the Carnegie Institution for Science. It was published in the online early edition of the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. This is John Strom for the Carnegie Institution.